Hi there, I'm Mark Pagani, and this is Tasting Tuesdays. And the crowd goes wild. Ah. Well, welcome back to Tasting Tuesdays. As always, if you would like to subscribe, please do click on this little logo right here. And if you want to jump ahead to the actual tasting where we actually sip this stuff, we meaning you know me and all these people around me, um, you can go to this spot right here. All right, so today we are looking at Barrel Armida. So Barrel, with two L's, um, is the brainchild of a guy named Joe Beatrice. I met him twice and spent a good half hour talking to him each time, uh, once in 2018 and once in 2019 at the New Orleans Bourbon Festival. Uh, we didn't actually talk about whiskey a lot. We talked about mountaineering and rock climbing and all that fun stuff. Uh, but he seems like a cool guy, and I enjoyed our conversation. Um, and I first found out about barrel whiskeys, uh, I think in 2015 when I was in Seattle. Uh, I had, I don't know which batch I had. It must have been one of the earlier batches, like two, three, four, something like that. Um, and I really liked it, and I liked the concept behind it. Um, the story goes that uh, Joe and his wife, Joe Beatrice, the founder and owner, uh, and his wife went to uh, bourbon country. They, uh, Joe made a good amount of money in craft beer, and they went to bourbon country, uh, went to the Bourbon Trail in Kentucky, and kind of fell in love with whiskey, and had the idea of, hey, let's buy some barrels from various places, and we'll mix them into a small batch, and we'll release them one batch at a time. And so, um, my favorite batch was, uh, actually the first bottle that I ever bought of Barrel was in Memphis. I bought in 2016 and it was batch number nine, which is a 13 year old. And I'm pretty sure a lot of their stuff comes from Tennessee, uh, from, uh, it's, it's not explicit, but it's kind of understood that a lot of it comes from Dickel. And this particular, uh, 13 year batch number nine does taste a lot like Dickel. Uh, if you're not into Dickel, you might not like it. But uh, for me, it's one of my favorite uh, bourbons that I've, that I've owned. And I've actually, over the last few years, since 2016, I've bought uh, two or three more of that bottle whenever, whenever I find it anywhere. Um, so, you know, if anybody has that available, any of you retailers, I'm winking my eye right now, any of you retailers have uh, batch number nine for sale, please do let me know. I'm very interested. Um, so... I've had many of their different batches. I've got a few back here, actually. I've got I have batch number five. Uh, batch number 11 from Barrel won the 2017 San Francisco Spirit Competition, Spirit Awards competition, um, and it, it won the bourbon section, not the overall competition, but the bourbon section of the 2017 uh, San Francisco Spirits Awards, and it's pretty fantastic. The nose is not, not spectacular, but uh, the whiskey itself is really, really good. And I have just a tiny bit of that left right now. And yeah, so anyway, getting back to Barrel Armida, this is a very, very unique bourbon, uh, sorry, very, very unique whiskey. It's bourbon whiskey finished in pear brandy, rum, and Sicilian Amaro casks. So it's bourbon that is finished in three different casks. Um, I don't know if on the back, it doesn't say, it doesn't say where it comes from. Uh, but I'll get, oh yeah, it does. It's distilled, distilled in Tennessee. So it's possible that this is also Dickel. Um, but it's unique in the fact that it's uh, finished in these three different casks, which is, un, you know, it's not unusual to finish at three different casks because, um, for instance, Whistlepig Old World 12 Year finishes in Sautern, Madeira, and Port casks. So it's done, but I don't think that anybody's ever done pear brandy, rum, and Amaro casks. So very unique. And... Let's talk a little bit more about it. Barrel Armida is a blend of three straight bourbon whiskeys finished separately in pear brandy, Jamaican rum, and Sicilian Amaro casks. It is 112.1 proof and there are a total of 3,700 bottles available. The mash bill is undisclosed, but since it is bourbon, we know it's at least 51% corn. While constructing the blend for this whiskey, Joe Beatrice, who is the founder of Barrel Spirits, was taken by how nostalgic some of the combinations of flavors were. Joe's mother's family had a farm in the Northeast where he would often spend time in the summer and autumn. These orchard fruit memories inspired many of the first test blends, and so Joe named the project after his mother's formal name, which is Armida. Barrel Armida was included on Maxim's list of the best new American whiskeys of 2020. 
Okay, now that you know a bit more about Barrel Armida, let's pour this out. Let's, let's have some whiskey porn. Bow, chicka, bow, bow. Okay, that's some, that's, some, that's some very sexy, sexy whiskey. Um, only 3,700 bottles of this were produced. I think I mentioned that earlier. Um, and so it's kind of a special bottle in that sense. But, you know, just because there's not a lot of bottles out there doesn't mean it's amazing, doesn't mean it's something that you have to have. Um, I always say that, you know, just that a whole allocated does not mean amazing. This is not allocated necessarily, but um, it is more hard to find because there's not that many bottles out there. So let's taste it and see see what it's all about. Try not to uh, let my bias towards liking barrels bottles um, influence me here. Hard to do, but we'll see. So yeah, you can really get, you really get that pear and uh, stone fruits on the nose. Lots of pear. Um, yeah, that's a weird one. So it's it's uh, there's also a little bit of pencil shavings, uh, that that scent that when you you know the freshly freshly shaved shaved and shave is a weird word, but freshly sharpened pencil. That's what I was looking for. Um, you get a little bit of that. It's definitely complex. There's a lot going on there. Interesting. Let's try it. Man, I tried this when I first got it and I feel the same way as I do now. It's just so unusual. It's not like any other whiskey that I've ever had. It's not like any other bourbon, scotch, Irish, Japanese, uh, rye. It's, it's very unique. Um, man, so there's, there's definitely that pear on the front end. Um, there's some, um, it's very perfume driven. It's weird because it reminds me a lot of uh, my grandmother who used to wear a lot of perfume. Um, and it wasn't you know, offensive, it wasn't in a bad way or anything. It was just very much there. And I get that, I'm, I'm getting that kind of like mental, kind of a, a taste connected to mental image thing going on here, just, just, just trying this. You'd think that, mm, God, it's so weird. We're not weird <laughs> in a bad way, weird amazing, like weird is a good thing for me um, because it's uniqueness is something that I look for. And you think that with uh, um, something that's finished in a rum cask, a brandy cask, and an Amaro cask, it would have this kind of um, syrupy sweetness, but it does not at all. It's very light um, and it's very complex. I'm tasting right now that, you know, as the, let me try it one more time. Yeah, it's interesting. So it shifts from that pear directly into like anise um, and then molasses. So it goes from kind of a complex fruity thing into uh, ouzo into um, molasses, like a very rich kind of creamy sweet thing, which is cool. Um, the finish itself, it starts wet, it finishes a little bit dry. Um, this is where you really get the Amaro in the, in the finish. Um, the Amaro is what, the Amaro and the pear is what really lasts in your mouth um, after you swallow it. I, I'm not a huge fan of the finish overall. It's, it's interesting and complex, but it's not the high point of, of the pour overall. I think the palate and the nose are, are more pleasant and more interesting than the, the finish. The finish has a tiny bit of, of dryness at the very end, which I like a very rich, velvety, uh, mouth covering finish. Um, I think it's definitely a very unique whiskey. It's not my favorite barrel that, that Barrel's ever put out. It's not my favorite bottle that Barrel's ever put out. Um, that still, I think, rests with the, uh, the Batch 9 uh, 13 year. But if you're looking for a really unusual, uh, whiskey, an unusual flavor profile, 
that you've probably never tried before. It's definitely something you have to have on your bar. Um, I think it's a decent value. I paid 70 bucks for it. Um, I think it should retail for 85 to 90. I got a good deal on it. Uh, and I think if you can find it for 90 bucks or less, I think you should go for it if you're into interesting, funky, unusual whiskeys. So yeah, with that, please do subscribe down here by clicking this little logo. And I will see you next week.